Small fly, big impact. Part 1. Why the fly? Drosophila melanogaster, known more commonly as the fruit fly or vinegar fly. Familiar to most of us as the uninvited guest that haunts our fruit bowls every summer, this particular creature is in fact the insect behind five Nobel Prizes to date. Having been studied intensively for over a hundred years, it's the subject of around a hundred thousand scientific papers. But why are so many so eager to study this tiny fly? And how did it become so important? Let's take a quick look at their history. Originating from equatorial Africa, fruit flies became cosmopolitan, following human culture all over the world. They made their debut in the US in the second half of the 19th century, first reported emerging from a jar of pickled plums. Back then, Charles Darwin's controversial theory of evolution was being debated around the world, and scientists wanted to test Darwin's ideas experimentally. One of them was Thomas Hunt Morgan. He wanted to study evolution by reproducing it in a laboratory. Fruit flies were perfect for the job. They're easy to catch and have a fast life cycle. A fly can become a grandparent in as little as 20 days, making experiments much quicker than in more complex animals. Their small size means that you could fit the entire population of London on a few lab trays. And they're cheap and easy to keep which means they're also suited to the scientist on a budget. And so the fly began a very successful career in Morgan's lab in 1906. Capitalising on their advantages, Morgan began breeding flies in huge numbers to test some of the ideas around Darwin's theories. When one day, he spotted a fly with white eyes instead of the usual vivid red. This moment would transform modern biology. You see, these white eyes represented a mutation of a gene that was inherited and turned out to be located on a chromosome, bringing together previously unlinked theories of the time. This brought to light important explanations for evolution and seeded new fields of research. The era of genetics began, and over the next few decades, flies taught us how genes are inherited and are arranged on chromosomes and how different mutations interact and influence each other. Around the middle of the 20th century, fly researchers began turning their microscopes to eggs and maggots too, so they can now study mutations that are often lethal in later development. These developmental studies using Drosophila genes, together with the discovery of DNA, the genetic code and gene technology, enormously helped unravel how genes actually contribute to biological functions and what can go wrong in disease. Nobel Prize winning Drosophila research, led by Ed Lewis, Christiana Nusselin Vollehard and Eric Wieschaus, made the enormous power of this approach unmistakably clear. Through studying development, they used sophisticated fly genetics to pick apart the fundamental processes by which body structures are formed. But why should we care about the biology of a simple fruit fly? It turns out that humans share a surprising amount in common with Drosophila. In particular, the genes that tell cells how to divide, develop and function, and what the basic body plan should look like, are often the same in humans. This new understanding yielded a wealth of exciting discoveries, even about the brain and processes of learning and memory, and about mechanisms of disease. As time goes on, the vast library of Drosophila knowledge and genetic tools continues to improve, fueling important advances in our understanding of many fundamental biological processes, including physiology, behaviour, cancer, ageing, development, nutrition, evolution, biomedical science, epigenetics, sleep, regeneration, gene regulation, stem cells, neurodegeneration, endosymbionts, action plan. Like to know more about how research in flies is helping us understand human diseases? Look for part two of this series, Making Research Fly.